In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Today is the great feast of the descendants of the Holy Spirit upon the disciples. Today, the church has been born again. And the holy disciples being filled with the Holy Spirit as tongues of fire, tongues of fire, and that set the Holy Church in fire all the time to go out to the world and to call everyone for repentance and salvation, to believe and to be saved. We remember when our Lord Jesus Christ sat with Nicodemus and he said to him, unless you are born again from the water and the spirit, you would not enter the heavenly kingdom. We all being born again in baptism and in receiving the Holy Spirit and the Holy Chrism. And we became the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came and is abiding in every one of us. God has completed his part of our salvation. He came, he took our sins on himself, he died, he was risen, and is giving us a new life to come back to the Father. He actually been risen to take us from death and took our humanity and ascended to the Father back, not for himself, because God doesn't need ascension, but we are the ones who need that ascension. He took us back to the Father to be in his bottom, to be on his right hand side. And we remember that we had that new nature, that new life. But we have a problem that our lives is not consistent with that new life. Our lives is not really that holy life that we have received in baptism and been sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And we actually try to understand how can we renew our lives? How can we bring us back to that holy life we have received. And that is why the Bible is always saying, don't resist the Holy Spirit. 
Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. And I remember the vision of Ezekiel the prophet when he saw water coming out from the right side of the altar and the flowing out. The water started to be at his ankle and when the water came to his ankle he, measure, he measured 1,000 cubits and the water came to his cubits, his ankle. 1,000 means completion, completion of time. The water which are coming from the right side of the altar is the Holy Spirit in the church. And as we notice, the Holy Spirit comes from where? From the altar, from the sacraments, from the Holy of Holies. And coming to the feet of all of us, at the ankle first and what is the Holy Spirit doing at our ankle? What is this water is doing at our ankle? It is the repentance. You remember when the Lord wanted to give the Holy Disciple the Holy Communion? He sat down and washed what? Their feet the ankle and this is the first thing we need to stop at for the work of the Holy Spirit inside us the Holy Spirit leads us to repentance you remember Saint Peter when he said his sermon it was three thousands people listening to him and the Bible tells us when he was speaking the Holy Spirit cut them to the heart cut them to the heart means what? he moved their heart to repent and that is why three thousands all together went to St. Peter and said to him, what do you want us to do? He said to them, to believe, to repent, and to get baptized. And they were all being baptized. The Holy Spirit is the only one who can change our hearts. We try so much to change the behavior of people, but unless the Holy Spirit change their hearts, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. No one can renew the Holy Spirit inside us except the Lord. When we repent, when we ask, when we believe. Then the Holy Spirit grew in our lives. And the Bible tells us the water, he measured one, another 1,000 cubits and the Holy Spirit came to his knees. And what is the knees in the work of the Holy Spirit? 
the Holy Spirit leads us for worship, leads us for worship, leads us for what? To grow, to have virtues, to be holy through the worship of God and our personal relationship with God, through the sacraments, And that is why in the Gospel today, the Bible tells us the Holy Spirit rebukes us for sin, which is repentance, and for the positive things, the virtues that we are not seeking, the good deeds that we have the opportunity to do it and we are not doing it. The Bible tells us every good deed you can do and you have the opportunity to do, and you don't to do it, is what? A sin. Is a sin. And that is why the Holy Spirit is coming to our knees. For what? For worship, for growth, for having the virtues that are the fruits of the Holy Spirit inside us. And then another 1,000 cu cubits, the Holy Spirit came to his hips. And his hips here are what? What surround our hips? Our bells. And when we have our bells, means what? Means we are standing up to go out. That simply means to go out to serve. You start with repentance, then worship and unity with Christ and growing in virtues, now you are called to go out and witness to the Lord, to go out and proclaim the good news for everyone around you. The Lord has come for the sinners to repent, for the sick to be healed, and for everyone to be saved. And this is our role too. This is our role too. Then the Bible tells us with another 1,000 cubits, the water became too much that his feet was not touching the earth. And when his feet didn't touch the, the earth means, 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 means you are not on the earth anymore. So you are swimming. You are flying up. You are leaving the earth to the everlasting life in heaven with the Lord forever. I wanted today to remind every one of us to listen to the Holy Spirit, 
to follow his guidance, to receive his remarks every day for you and to follow him. I remember St. Paul is saying, I wanted to go that way, but the Spirit of the Lord prevented me. The Spirit of the Lord prevented me, guided me, stopped me. Does every one of us hear the Holy Spirit in his life? Do we really every day when we open our Bibles and read it, hear the Holy Spirit cutting us to the heart, changing our lives, changing our thoughts and intentions. This is what we need to renew the Holy Spirit inside us. The Holy Spirit today is cooling everyone to repent, to grow in virtues, and to witness to the Lord before we leave this earth, before we face our Lord in the last judgment, in the day of judgment. I wish every one of you to listen to that Holy Spirit and obey, obey, obey His voice in your life. You need, you need to be trained to hear the Holy Spirit. I remember when Samuel, the prophet, was in the temple and the Lord called him Samuel, Samuel. He thought that Ali the priest is the one who is calling him. He went and said to him, did you call me? He said, no, I didn't call you. You must be dreaming. Go back to sleep. He went back. But the Lord said, Samuel, Samuel, for the second time, he went back to Ali the priest, and Ali the priest said, I told you, you are dreaming, go back to sleep. And for the third time, the Lord said, Samuel, Samuel. And on the third time, he went to Ali the priest. Ali the priest understood that it was God calling him. And the big question, if God was calling him, why God didn't talk to Samuel? Because he was not listening. So Ali the priest said to him, when you hear that voice, say, speak, Lord, I am listening. And then the Lord called Samuel, saying, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel stood and said to the Lord, Speak, Lord, I am listening. And then the Lord spoke to him. The Holy Spirit inside us is very sensitive. Unless you say to him, speak, Lord, I am listening, you wouldn't hear his voice clearly. Keep saying to the Lord, speak, Lord, I am listening. 
the Holy Spirit will talk and you will hear the voice of God and you will recognize his presence and you will be able to follow him. May our Lord Jesus Christ give us all to hear his voice and to follow him. May the Lord give us all always to repent, to grow in virtues, and to be his witness. Glory to God forever. Amen.